Thank you again, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm joined here by, by many individuals from all over the state, and I wanted to take a brief opportunity to introduce several of them. On the floor in the back, we have uh, uh, Dr. Madahi from uh, Beverly Hills, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Sajarian, a world-renowned artist and musician, uh, Mr. Carmel Melamad, also from Los Angeles from my district, Dr. Amir Hamidi from Sacramento area, uh, Dr. Kumar Zarzani, who's a founder of a charter school in my district, Mr. Uh, Joe Shoshani, a public works commissioner in Beverly Hills, Dr. Nikki Hakimi here in Sacramento, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Ardalan as well from Los Angeles. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I did not include numerous other individuals who are sitting up in the gallery. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Mr. McCarty, Mr. McCarty, you are recognized for your guest introductions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd also, also like to introduce three individuals from District 7 from West Sacramento celebrating No Ruse in the gallery with us today from the Organization of American Iranian Communities are Mr. Mosan Belizadeh, Mr. Fred Gadusi, and Mr. Fred Dasmalchi. Members, pr please join me in welcoming them to our state capitol. Members, moving to file item number two for the purpose of amendment, ACR 27. Clerk will read with amendments. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 27 with amendments by Assemblymember Gaines. Ms. Gaines, you may open on the amendments. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. These amendments are simple language corrections to the resolution. I ask that they be adopted, put out to print, and back on file. Thank you. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on the amendments. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted. Bill is out to print and back on file. File item number three. ACR 31. Clerk will read. Assembly concurrent resolution 31 by Assemblymember Perea and others relative to California Agriculture Day. Mr. Perea, you may open. Mr. Speaker and members, I'm proud to present ACR 31, which honors California's Agriculture Day, a day of celebration commemorating agriculture's vital role in keeping Californians nourished. This year's theme, uh, the 2015 uh, theme for California Ag Day is California Breaking New Ground. On this coming Wednesday, March 18th, agriculturalists from around California will have displays on the west lawn of the Capitol to show off the innovative ways California agriculture is breaking new ground from leading edge technologies to new ways of farming. California has been the largest ag state in the country for the last six decades. The value of 2012 production was over $42 billion. There are more than 80,000 farms and ranches in California producing more than 400 commodities with 79% of farms that are, are owned by either individuals or family owned. On average, more than 20% of California ag production is, is exported. The value of California ag exports in 2012 was $18.8 billion. California is the only state to export olives, almonds, pistachios, and raisins. Colleagues, I ask that you join me in supporting ACR 31 to show support for California agriculture, and I respectfully ask for your I vote and ask for the first roll call to be open for co-authors. Thank you, Mr. Prey. Mr. Gallagher, you are recognized. Yes, members, uh, I rise as a joint author of ACR 31 and would ask for your support. Uh, we are certainly blessed to live here in California, and one of the reasons that we are so blessed is that we have such a plentiful uh, resource in our agriculture industry. You know, when you go into your supermarket, when you go into the local 
uh, local market, when you go to um, you know, any place where you go to buy food, you are greeted by a whole uh, plethora of, of commodities and fresh produce that you can buy because it's grown right here in California. And, uh, but I want everybody to understand that that also goes, this food goes all over the world and feeds people who are hungry throughout uh, the world. And that hard work that's done in the fields uh, helps not only us here in California, but people throughout this nation um, and throughout the world. And this doesn't happen... Uh, by happenstance. It happens because of the hard work of farmers and farm workers uh, who every day go out and, and ensure that, who, who brave weather, uh, who, br- who brave um, uh, storms, who brave freezes uh, to, to bring that produce, to bring those commodities uh, to your dinner table. Uh, and we know that it doesn't happen without regulatory and business certainty that we need here in California. Uh, in order for us to remain number one in the nation, which we are, California is the number one ag producer in the nation, in order for us to continue that and to provide those critical jobs uh, in this state, we need to have that certainty. Uh, we need to continue to support our farmers and farm workers, and we need to understand their needs. And I, I do want to uh, encourage you to attend a farm tour that I'm going to be holding uh, here very shortly uh, up in Butte County. I'd love to have you guys come up and, and learn a little bit more about some of our farmers um, who bring that fresh food uh, and bring that nourishment to our, to our families. And if you have that opportunity, please take me up on that. And one final thing is, as we celebrate Ag Day on Wednesday, the other thing that we can't, that agriculture will not be able to continue without, is the next generation. And you're going to see a whole lot of young people wearing blue jackets walking around this building. They're in the Future Farmers of America program. Uh, that's a vital uh, program that which I was a part. I learned many uh, great leadership skills in that program. And Assemblymember Perret and I had the opportunity to meet with many of these young individuals as they came to the Capitol uh, last week uh, and participated in the Sacramento Leadership Experience. Uh, we need to support those students and to support the next generation of agriculture so that we can continue to produce the most wholesome, nourishing food uh, that the world benefits from. So thank you and ask for your support on this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Gallagher. Ms. Olson, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I, too, rise in support of ACR 31 and just want to underscore the invitation from my colleagues from the Central Valley and the North State to join us on Wednesday here at the Capitol and celebrate Ag Day. For all of the new members who have joined us this year, this is literally one of the most fun events of the year. And I think our colleagues would acknowledge that, whether we're from rural, suburban, or urban areas. You can hug a llama. You can enjoy chili with tomatoes, strawberries, almonds, and the list goes on. It's just a great day of celebration as we celebrate together the bounty of California that literally feeds not only our own communities, not our statewide economy, not our nation, but the world is dependent on California agriculture. So come out and join us on Wednesday. And as my colleague also said, we'd also love to work with everyone to really highlight the current needs for farmers and farm workers. The speaker and I had an amazing opportunity last week to visit with farm workers and farm workers and farmers alike throughout the Central Valley, really understanding the acute desperation right now for water. And so as we celebrate on Wednesday, Day, let's also work together and remind ourselves of the huge challenges facing California right now and how we can help these individuals, these families, our communities, and our statewide economy by all working together to solve this challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Olson. Mr. Cooley, you are recognized. Colleagues, I'm pleased to rise in support of this and just bring two points forward in support of ACR 31. First point is just how profound the California brand is for agriculture. Of course, we grow agriculture. The products feed Californians. But in the, in the world, when you sort of follow the news, there has been concern around the globe of different types of food products which come out of nations where quality control is not as good as you would like, where there can be questions of whether it's somehow been contaminated or adulterated in some way. And so this actually is a great uh, foundation for our export trade. We are able to send trade around the globe because the California brand for agricultural products ensures to people that this is wholesome, 
pure food that is not going to be adulterated in any way. Just Saturday night with uh, Mr. Cooper at an ag dinner here in Sacramento County, I visit with constituents who run a – they produce food for horses, and they're finding a global market because of the strength of our brand. So supporting agriculture, the power of the California brand is very great in, around the globe, and I want to note that out. And I would be remiss for all of my colleagues, as you have constituents visiting you this Wednesday with an ag background, I will point out that high on the wall of the rotunda, when you walk in there, you're going to see some columns way up high with what look like banners draped between the columns. And the thing to be on top of for your constituents this Wednesday is coming out of the top of all of those columns are horns of plenty, and the banner is all manner of California produce. So ringing the upper wall of the rotunda is all of our produce in these banners. And, and I know your ag constituents, you take a walk through the rotunda, you'll see those columns, you'll see the banners, they'll enjoy you sharing that fact about the state capitol that we adorn our rotunda with the produce of California. Thank you very much. Mr. Mathis, you're recognized. I too must stand and rise uh, for support for ACR 31, um, being that I have the great city of Tulare in my district, which is home to the World Ag Expo, and we're also the currently number one in ag and dairy in the state and in the nation. Um, I urge you all for your support on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mathis. Ms. Eggman, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise also in support of ACR 31 as the uh, a former uh, chair of ag. It's certainly my honor to be able to travel around the state and see the great work that is being done here in California and even able to go with the governor last year on the trade mission to, governor, uh, to Mexico and see all of our fruits and vegetables in day markets everywhere around that great country, uh, as well, of course, in here where uh, we always try to do our best to buy local, uh, and I hope everybody's uh, eating their asparagus this month from the Delta. Um, and also just someone who, who uh, one of the few people in this chamber who uh, grew up in an agriculture background, family still makes our living in agriculture, certainly understands all the difficulties that comes along with it, the challenges, and, the, uh, and certainly the, uh, the, the harvest and the new spring. Um, and also just to uh, comment that this is also the year of the soil. Uh, we're really going to be celebrating dirt this year um, and being able to go around and see some organic farms that are even able to um, uh, sequester carbon in some of the work they're doing to really address issues of climate change that are uh, so pressing for all of us to be able to continue uh, this great way of life that we have here. So I stand in strong support of ACR 31. Mr. Daly, you're recognized. I wasn't going to actually stand up, but uh, being one of the only farmers on the floor, I thought I'd stand up and uh, say that it, uh, I support this uh, resolution. As uh, somebody who was driving a tractor yesterday and enjoying every second of it, uh, I stand with uh, all the farmers in the state and in the world, quite frankly. And I would ask one thing, pray for rain. And snow. Seeing no further discussion, Mr. Perea, you may close. Just respectfully ask for an I vote. Mr. Perea is asking that the first roll be open for co-authors. The clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors. Co-authors on ACR 31. Co-authors, members, we have 74 co-authors added to ACR 31. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on this resolution. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Mr. Perea, back to you, sir, for your guest introduction. Not a guest introduction, but colleagues, just a quick announcement that uh, this Wednesday, March 18th, is California Ag Day, and it will be going on from 1030 to 1 p.m. on the west steps of the Capitol. So we're, everybody's uh, invited to join us. Thank you. Members, moving to file item number four, file item number four, ACR 41, clerk will read. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 41 by Assembly Member Ting, relative to Sunshine Week. Mr. Ting, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. ACR 41 designates this week, starting March 15th, as Sunshine Week. California has really been leading the country in being more transparent, more open data, really more open government, and this resolution does documents that. 
Uh, it commends two agencies, our controller's office, as well as our health and human services for creating more uh, open data, more portals so that the public can access information. Uh, my city, San Francisco, and numerous cities around the state have also created web portals where citizens can access financial data, can access data about public safety, can access information around transportation or education. Uh, we find that government works best when there's more transparency and more openness. And again, I uh, just want to ask that you all sign on to ACR 41 and uh, celebrate Sunshine Week this week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ting. Ms. Olson, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, the topics of resolution today are obviously of great interest to me. And so I, too, rise in support of ACR 41 and want to compliment the author for bringing this forward as we all work together to celebrate Sunshine Week. As many people in this legislature know, transparency is a very important personal priority to me, as well as a high priority for the city council I served on and for this body in the state assembly. Last week, Assembly Republicans rolled out a package to encourage greater transparency and over open government in the halls of the state legislature, as well as state agencies and departments. We look forward to, we hope, working with each and every one of our colleagues, Republicans and Democrats alike, because transparency is good for everyone. It's good for all Californians. It's good for all elected officials. We will be able to earn greater trust from the people we serve if we are more transparent in the way we operate. So that that is our invitation to please work with us. We want to be partners in this endeavor. This is not a partisan issue. This is something that all of us can work together on to increase transparency in the halls of the legislature and therefore earn greater trust from Californians all up and down the state. So thank you for bringing this resolution forward. I urge a co-authorship and an I vote. Mr. Ting, you may close. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. We just ask that the roll be open for co-authors and ask for your support. Very good. Mr. Ting is asking that the roll, first roll be open for co-authors. The clerk will open the roll. All members vote who wish to vote, adding as co-authors on ACR 41. Members, this is for co-authors. We have 74 co-authors added to ACR 41. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on this item. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, this resolution will be immediately transmitted to the Senate. File item number five, ACR 42, clerk will read. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 42 by Assemblymember Quirk relative to Science Fair Month. Mr. Quirk, you may open. Thank you, Speaker and members. I rise to present Assembly Concurrent Resolution 42 which de would declare the month of March to be Science Fair Month. By supporting Science Fair Month, this legislative body can support and encourage young minds to develop a growing interest in science, engineering, and math, and perhaps more importantly, how to communicate these ideas. As a scientist and engineer, I know these young minds are learning the value of the knowledge they acquire and the surprises they find, through science and engineering exploration. Science fairs encourage students to ask questions, set goals, develop an action plan, experiment, and communicate their results. Assemblymember Baker and I will be attending the fourth annual Synops Synopsis Alameda County Science and Engineering Fair, co-sponsored by Lawrence Livermore Lab on March 22 to 20, I encourage you to get involved in your regional science fairs. I requestfully request your I vote to declare the month of March as Science Fair Month. I ask that the first roll be open for co-authors. Thank you, Mr. Quirk. Ms. Baker, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank our good colleague for raising this resolution and rising strong support. Um, District 16 is the proud home of the Lawrence Livermore National Labs, including the National Ignition Facility and the second most powerful computer in the world, soon to be upgraded to the most powerful computer in the world. And the labs are a tremendous example of partnerships between our science facilities and science professionals and our schools. And one way in which the lab does that is not only pro by providing funding to our schools, but putting on science fairs. 
Uh, we're going to have over 600 students at the Alameda County Fairgrounds this weekend competing and learning and sharing with others what their scientific exploration has been and what they've learned and, uh, in good, healthy competition. And science fairs are often the ways in which our children in this state learn the scientific method and how it has a practical application to their lives and future careers. So I urge us all not only to support this resolution, but to amplify the message that comes with it as we go back to our districts this weekend and throughout the month in supporting science fairs throughout our school districts and communities. And I urge an I vote. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Uh, Mr. Quirk, do you wish to close? Uh, I urge your I vote and ask the, that the first roll be open for co-authors. Members without objection, the first roll will be open for co-authors. The clerk will open the roll. All members vote who wish to vote, adding on to ACR 42. This is for co-authors, members. Co-authors. There are 72 co-authors added to ACR 42. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on this item. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye oppose say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Mr. Quirk, back to you for your guest introduction. Good morning, speaker and members. In recognition of Science Fair Month, I would like to take a moment to recognize a very special guest. Patty Carruthers is the founding director of the Alameda County Science and Engineering Fair that is co-sponsored by Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Through her leadership, the fair provides a forum for stimulating student interest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I'm very excited to visit the fair this year and see what great experiments and discoveries students make and how well they communicate them. Please join me in welcoming her to the California State Assembly. Thank you, members. Moving back to guest introductions, Mr. Rendon, you are recognized for your guest introduction, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have the honor today of introducing a friend and former member of the Michigan Legislature, John Sw Switalski, who joins us on the floor today. John served his entire six years in the Mis Michigan House of Representatives as allowed by Michigan's term limits. Having been, been termed out last June, he moved to Los Angeles to see if he might contribute in some way to our state's policy and political dialogue. John grew up in Michigan, but like so many, he was inspired by all the great things that our state has accomplished in leading the nation on so many critical issues. He wants to be part of our efforts here in California, and I look forward to seeing where he chooses to, chooses to participate. Please welcome John Switalski. <clears throat> Members, we will now move to announcements and adjournments in memory. Members, please take your seats. Please take your seats, members. Request to adjourn in memory. The following members were granted prior permission to speak on an adjournment in memory. Mr. Bro, you are recognized at your desk, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, I ask that we adjourn in memory of Laguna Hills resident Hal Schultz, who passed away on March 7th. In addition to Hal's 40 years successful career as a CPA, he devoted his lifetime to the profession that he loved as an active member of the California Society of CPAs and the American Institute of CPAs. Hal served on a numerous amount of committees and task force 
dedicated to the advancement of the CPA profession, including being chair of Cal CPA, and he served 25 years on Cal CPA's Government Relations Committee. For the last 16 years, Hal's provided strategic advice and counsel to Cal CPA regarding regulatory issues before the Board of Accountancy and other matters pertaining to the enhancement and best interests of the CPA profession in California. Hal virtually attended every meeting of the California Board of Accountancy, providing a wealth of information and unique perspective. Throughout his time with Cal CPA, Hal was highly regarded and respected for being knowledgeable and a consummate professional. Few, if any, had a bigger impact on the CPA profession in California than Hal Schultz. Hal is survived by his wife, Melody, their two sons, Charles and Jason, and their daughter, Marcy's. Our thoughts go out to the family today, and I ask that we adjourn in Hal's memory. Mr. Thurmond, you are recognized for your adjournment in memory. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, sadly, I rise to ask that we adjourn in memory of a friend, a great public servant, a constituent, Mr. Richard Voicy, who passed away on March 4th at age 54 after a very valiant two-year battle with occupational brain cancer. Rich Voicy was a 35-year firefighter in the city of Pinole, and he rose from the ranks to become a captain. Uh, and he is someone who many of us identify with the city of Pinole. He was concerned about fire safety. He was concerned about the well-being of all in the community. And he was a leader in the community on all issues uh, of supporting others. Uh, Rich was born September 29, 1960 at Kaiser Hospital in Oakland to his parents, Charles and Mary Voicy. He was the youngest of six children. As I mentioned, he served the city of Pinole for 35 years. He worked and lived in Pinole and was active in his community and local government as a resident and as a vice president of the United Professional Firefighters of Contra Costa County, Local 1230, for many years. He served the state as a local government engine company officer on many Cal OES strike team assignments throughout his career. Rich had a professional dedication to the fire service profession and a deep personal commitment to the city of Pinole, where he raised his family. Rich was honored many times as the Pinole Firefighter of the Year, including in 1994, 2001, and 2013. Rich was a loving husband, father, son, grandfather, and brother. He was a great firefighter, a great leader, and a great citizen. The Pinole Fire Department, his fire service brothers and sisters, and his community will miss, will miss Rich. We honor his memory and send our condolences to his wife, Nancy, his daughter, Sassy, and Sarah, his son, Joshua, and his granddaughter, Autumn. I just would like to say that Rich is someone who worked with everybody in the community. Uh, whenever you saw Rich, he was smiling, and he didn't care about politics, even though he worked in politics. He cared about what he could do to make his community better. And when he became ill, he never complained about his struggle, but he fought valiantly and the entire community rallied behind Rich Voicy. He will be deeply missed. Thank you, members. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. Mr. Jones, you are recognized at your desk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. It, it uh, is truly an honor today uh, to rise in recognition of Cy Brenner, uh, one of America's greatest of the greatest generation. Uh, not only was he of the greatest generation, he was an American POW, and uh, more recently, an honoree of the California State Assembly. Cy Brenner uh, was a World War II veteran, a Purple Heart recipient, and passed away on March 4, 2015. At the age of 20, Cy was drafted, where he served in the United States Army, 410th Infantry Regiment of the 103rd Division. On the evening of November 29, 1944, while serving in the south of France, Brenner was wounded and taken prisoner by the Nazis, where he was marched over treacherous mountain terrain for two weeks from North Holden, France, to Ludwigsburg, Germany, at the height of the coldest winter in European history. During this time, he survived solely by eating snow and was forced to keep his Jewish ancestry a secret as a matter of survival. While incarcerated in Stalag 5A, Sai was recruited by and became highly involved in the French and German underground, where he helped to stage fake funerals for fellow prisoners in order to smuggle them out of the prison camps. 
Shortly after the war ended, Cy married his wife, Raisa, and moved to California in 1951, where he entered the sales field. The couple had three children, six grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. Upon return from his incarceration, Brenner was visited by the FBI and was told and warned not to talk about any of his experiences or circumstances during the war. Because of this, he spent the majority of his life and, uh, keeping his experiences secret. This greatly added to his suffering of PTSD, and he did not speak of his experiences for over 50 years. Sy finally began speaking at local schools, sharing his experiences of the war. He has spoken to over 68 organizations about his war experiences, including five times to the leadership classes of the Marine Corps at Camp Pendleton and to the Navy, who presented him with the honorary Top Gun Award. Mr. Brenner has been highly decorated for his services with such honors as the prestigious Purple Heart, Bronze Star, POW Medal, and his proudest honor, the Combat Medic Medal. Sai was a shining example of a model citizen and nothing short of a true gentleman. At the age of 91, he was the subject of his first ever selfie. And I had the opportunity and the honor of taking that selfie as he and I were riding on the airplane from uh, San Diego to Sacramento. And I had the honor of sharing his bravery in the Assembly's Holocaust Memorial Ceremony last year. Although his story was different than that of the typical Holocaust survivor or liberator, Sai was worthy of his high honor for not only surviving as a Jewish POW, but orchestrating the escape of several other prisoners. I'd like to point out that Sai had the opportunity to write a book called The Night I Got Killed, when he talks about his experiences of war and recovery in America. It is with a heartfelt sadness that I stand a year later honoring his passing. Members, thank you very much for uh, sharing with me today and adjourning in memory of Cy Brenner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Wagner, you are recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I ask that we adjourn in the memory of my friend William Jay. I first met Bill Jay in the late 90s. He was wrapping up a career as an administrator at Saddleback Community College after having spent many years as a faculty member, and I was a new trustee to the board that oversaw Saddleback. We became uh, reacquainted several years later when Bill himself was elected to that board, and we had the opportunity, I had the opportunity to serve with him for approximately six years. Um, he was an outstanding colleague, good-natured, good-humored, very intelligent, and fiercely devoted to, to the students. Um, I learned an awful lot watching him work and counted uh, him amongst uh, uh, my good friends. Uh, we lost Bill uh, earlier this month. He is survived by his wife Bobby, two children, several grandchildren, and I would say by tens of thousands of students whose lives were made better because their educations were made better by my friend Bill Jay. Thank you for allowing us to adjourn in his memory today. He will be missed. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Wagner. Mr. Quirk, you are recognized for your adjournment and memory. Good afternoon, speaker and members. It is with a heavy heart that I rise in the memory of Margaret Dolores Pagan. Margaret was the mother of my chief consultant for the Public Safety Committee, Greg Pagan. Margaret was a native of San Francisco, but spent most of her adult life living in Oakland. She earned her RN degree only have, after having raised all five of her children, a second career, she called it. She worked at Presbyterian Hospital in San Francisco. She loved to spend time with her family and looked forward to family vacations at Camp Mather near Yosemite. Her friends and family describe her as funny, fun-loving, kind, and easygoing. Never had the privilege to meet Margaret, but in knowing how well she raised Greg, I know she was an outstanding woman and mother. Margaret is survived by her five children, eight grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. I ask that this body adjourn today in the memory of Margaret Dolores Pagan. 
Members, please bring the names to the desk to be printed in the journal. All requests to adjourn a memory will be deemed read and printed in the journal. A few announcements, members, on behalf of Speaker Atkins, I'd like to remind you that there is a reception in the Willie Brown Conference Room for Greg Evans. That's Greg Evans' reception in the conference room. There will also be a reception for Nowruz in room 317 from 12.30 to 3 p.m. On behalf of the Irish members, souvenirs will be delivered to your offices tomorrow in honor of St. Patrick's Day. The candy is from a local gourmet jelly bean company in my hometown of South San Francisco. Assemblymember Gallagher will distribute small jars of Irish-themed mints from a small business in his district. In a shamrock plant, the shamrock represents the number three, which symbolizes that everything good in Ireland comes in threes. Thank you for your attention, and may the luck of the Irish be with you all. I'm also being told that we're celebrating a birthday on the floor today. Assemblymember Scott Wilk is celebrating a birthday. Congratulations. The session schedule is as follows. Tuesday, March 17th, check-in session. Wednesday, March 18th, check-in session. Thursday, March 19th, floor session at 9 a.m. All other items remaining will be passed and retained. All motions shall be continued. Seeing and hearing no further business, I am ready to entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Holden moves, Ms. Olson seconds that this House stands adjourned until Thursday, March 19th at 9 a.m. Quorum call is lifted.